So this is um, the site of Pella. And as I said, Pella was named after um, Alexander the Great's birthplace in Macedonia. The gentleman uh, said that uh, because I'm from Australia and I would be welcome here because this site was excavated, um, I read by the University of Sydney. So I'm excited to go and have a look. So Pella acts as one of the uh, Decheopolises, so the, one of the ten larger communities with Damascus in the north and uh, Philadelphia to the south. Philadelphia is now modern day Amman. Um, so between here and Ajalun, they're all of those important cities, the ten cities during that Greco-Roman period. So uh, the, the vista is just amazing. It's just so rich in uh, colour and green because the Jordan Valley is such a fertile environment. So coming into the entry of uh, Pella, the guy at the gate asked me if I knew um, the manager of this site who's an Australian and I uh, explained no that not all Australians know each other it's quite a big place so this is actually um, the ruins this is the excavation of Pella which is one of the ten major cities during this period and this is actually a Canaanite temple I'm gonna have to investigate what a Canaanite temple is but um, you know, we knew that people um, from the uh, country of Canaan, so it'll uh, probably be something like that, a Middle Eastern uh, part of the religion. I think I've scared Muhammad a little bit that he's uh, actually going to turn the car around, lock it up and come with me just so that I don't get lost or fall down a hole. Just um, several layers of um, building and stone there. One of the things I can see over there on that hill is uh, the sheep just on the ridge, ridge line. And the other thing I notice over there is those caves in the hillside. I am going to have to find out how I get down to there. There's a path heading down so uh, it could be uh, my adventure for the day. I'm getting down into that space over there. So this sign is just telling us about what happened at this area and uh, between the uh, Islamic and Byzantine armies in 13 AH and uh, AH uh, represents, um, I'm going to get it wrong, um, after I think it's Hijjah, um, after Muhammad uh, migrated to Medina. So that's when the uh, Islamic calendar starts. So we're just trying to figure out how we can get down into that amphitheatre space. So uh, we might go back to the main gate and uh, ask them at the main gate how to get to that treatment area, that water treatment plant over there just behind those gum trees and... Uh, See if we can gain access via that flat area. All part of the adventure. As you can see, I've uh, managed to get down to the bottom of the antiquity. And uh, Muhammad's driven me as close as he can. Um, it's quite amazing. It's a good uh, couple of kilometres, a good kilometre wide maybe, the whole site. There's a barrier fence up there, so I'm not sure how far I'll be able to get up there, but I'll go for a walk and see what I can find. So I've just walked a, up a slight embankment and I've come into this colonnade area. Part of the excavations are very, very deep here. How I was saying about one of the other antiquities about when you're looking at a column 
the base of the column is often really quite plain but then when you see the top of a column they're quite ornate and there is a way of telling which is a male and a female column but of course I can't remember what that is there's four or five different uh, column designs these ones are really quite ornate and even in the floor, if you look at the floor from a distance, it's this checkerboard pattern, which just has this beautiful symmetry. Walls are really quite wide. Got an, almost a natural fortification as well as the elevation. So you've got these two rows of columns in this higher section and as you're looking down over this section the columns are arranged in a square on uh, the edge of this area here. The marble is just so exquisite. exquisite. You can see the, the marbling in the stone there. Just wonderful. Once again, almost silence, just a bird and a bit of a tractor over in the distance. There's some people filming over there. Don't want to get in their way, so I'll just stick on this side of the antiquity. I've just come across this um, threshold here, this almost like what I'm anticipating would have been the doors. And you can just see the different grooves in the stone here where I'd make some anticipation that these square sections were where the posts were that supported the door and uh, the doors came into this grooved area just here. Once again, I've got no idea what I'm talking about, but I can make an estimated guess of uh, what it could be. Just amazing. Just amazing. So I've got some stairs to go down here and uh, they are not even. So I'm, uh, if I fall and start cursing, you know that that's absolutely me and the way that I respond in the first instance to something quite difficult. Just go down backwards just in case I fall on my ass. It's, uh, it's a little less precious to me than the rest of my body right, if I fall on my face. I might have to go past these people filming because it looks as if it's the only way uh, to get down. Oh, maybe there's more stairs just here leading down to that arched area. I'm going to have to have a look. So I don't know if you can actually get some perspective of uh, what I've uh, just walked up. So the uh, staircase um, just uh, is um, formed to the slope of the hill and then you go up into this first like antechamber and uh, which has the columns all around the outside and then you go through that another doorway and you've got the two columns on either side so gradually going up the hill to a more and more impressive building Just walking precariously down these slopes that are just covered in loose rocks, so it just makes every step a little bit of a challenge. But you can kind of see this archway or a bit of a viaduct or something here, and the stones on it are really quite raw uh, shaped stones. So um, whether they were naturally found or they've become that way over time, uh, it's really quite interesting, but still has those sim same principles of an archway with um, the lodestone in the middle pushing the weight to either side, keeping it in situ. It's just the same absolutely everywhere I go that I'm just blown away with 
the majesty or magic of the place and no amount of reading it in a in a textbook or seeing it in a travel guide uh, gives it any justice to actually smell it hmm because it's a very sheepy area so there's a lot of sheep boop um, and the, the flies and walking over the wildflowers and those uh, loose stones <laughs> are always a bit of a nervous uh, challenge for me but honestly where else would you want to be or oh, when the temperatures whatever it is 22 23 degrees thank goodness i didn't do this in july it would have been at about 50.